This is the Grand River. It runs through Michigan's lower peninsula, and it's my neighbor. I've been working on this map lately, and I quickly realized there just isn't readily available water data for a large-scale map like this. First, I checked out OpenStreetMap data, but the precision just wasn't enough. And satellite-derived shapes are great for small and medium-scale maps, but it just wasn't quite enough for what I needed. Hang on a second. I'm not mapping the whole world, just a little stretch of river. What am I, afraid of a little bit of tracing? The world imagery base map has exquisite detail. Here's how I manually create detailed polygons in ArcGIS Pro, quickly. Over here in the View tab, I'll open up the Catalog pane. The Catalog pane has so much good stuff in it, specific specifically the databases associated with this project. I can add a new one or create one from scratch, but I'll open up this existing database and create a new feature class. I'll name this new feature class Grand River, and it's gonna be a polygon. I don't need to store 3D data, so I'll just uncheck this and finish it right up. Thank you for your service, Catalog Pane. Now, even though this polygon layer doesn't have any content yet, I'm gonna style it so I can see through it while I draw. So in the Symbology panel, I'll make its fill very semi-transparent because really it's the outline that I wanna be nice and bold. I'll make it yellow and give it a outline width of two. And now I'm ready to dive into this mysterious edit tab and choose create. And I'll select my new Grand River layer as the recipient of this editing. Now you might be tempted to choose this freehand option, but I found the results to be very generalized. I like the precision available to me within the polygon option, specifically this streaming option for polygon drawing. The way it works is you click anywhere on the map to get it going and then it just machine guns out little nodes brrr, as you go. It's fantastic. It's amazing the amount of ground you can cover in such a short amount of time and the precision is really wild. And it's not adding vertices by time, it's adding it based on the distance that you've moved. So you can take your time and go nice and slow. You can pause the streaming by clicking once and then to get it going again, you just click again. And when you double click the mouse, you'll close the polygon. Say you wanna move the map over when you're in this mode. Just click on the scroll wheel of your mouse and pan, and then release click to start drawing again. Maybe you like to draw your polygon in segments and then mush them all together into one polygon. Here's how you can do that. Up in the edit toolbar, there's a modify button. We'll activate this and look for the merge option within the construct group. With this merge mode active, we'll select all the blobs we want to melt together and choose merge. Alternatively, you could stay in the modified features group and choose reshape, which lets you reshape the selected polygon. And I'm gonna come down here to this draw toolbar and make sure that our old friend streaming is active and then just like stream away. As long as the beginning and ending intersect this polygon, it'll be appended. And as always, you double click to end the stream. Now you may have noticed I have a slight issue when it comes to really confidently digitizing this coastline. All those luscious trees getting in my way. While the world imagery base map is a great high res resource for digitizing, maybe I can find a version of it with like less leaves. Enter World Imagery Wayback. It catalogs all the previous versions of the World Imagery base map because maybe you don't need the latest version of the imagery. Maybe you're digitizing Grand River and need a more leaf off season as your reference. So I'll zoom in on our friendly little stretch of river and I'll take a stroll back through time to find the most recent, most leaf off version. And Jackpot, this one from a couple of years ago will do perfectly. I'll select it and hit this little I info button to open up its details page in ArcGIS Online. I'll copy its URL to my clipboard and then paste it into Pro using this add data from path menu. And now I have an old version of the imagery base map that's a lot better for digitizing. Now I can see through those trees to the actual coastline and make more confident edits. And I can just keep reshaping this in stream mode to get better and better results. Oh no, what if I mess up? No worries, just hit that ever merciful little undo button up there. Thank you, undo button. Now the keen-eyed among you may have noticed this gigantic island. It's an adorable landmark that helps me find my house on any map. A hundred years ago, there's a lumber mill on it. The river brought the logs and powered the saws. And there are a handful of littler islands closer to the bank, here and on the other side of the bridge over here. What's a polygon to do about a topological conundrum like this? Not to worry, just fire up the continue feature. We map makers have an almost unfair amount of satisfying tasks endowed to us, but poking holes in polygons has to be among the top. There's something pretty meditative about editing polygons like this. 
You just slip into the zone and go. And the question becomes, how much detail do I want? Not how much detail can I find? Now I keep using the word precision, but if you zoom in really closely on these lines, we get a case of the jaggies. And this stair-stepped geometry is only noticeable when you zoom in to an absurd amount, but it can cause some issues down the road if you apply some advanced symbology. So we'll take care of it. So let's select this polygon and then go into the edit options. I'll choose modify. Within that familiar reshape group, there's an option for generalize. And let me navigate to an island so we have a better visual sense for what we'll get. Okay, there are three methods, simplify, smooth, and densify. Simplify will just remove vertices. And you have a distance lever here to fine tune the effect. The greater the distance, the more vertices get removed. The smooth method will add Bezier-like curves to the sequence of vertices. And the result of this adds interpolated vertices to your line, with the resulting shape being more naturalistic and organic. Note that you can hit generalize multiple times. Every time you click that button, the effect is applied. So if you find you've overdone it, you've always got that back button up here. And I recommend the order of simplifying and then smoothing rather than the inverse. Okay, we've created, we've edited, and we've punched holes in polygons using the stream mode, making it so fast. We've also merged multiple polygons into one polygon and generalized them to make them smooth and snazzy. But what's the point of snazzy water polygons if you don't make them look amazing? Let's give this river a suitably rivery appearance. I'll give it a stroke outline color of medium blue and a fill color of light blue. Because that's what we like to do with water. But we also like to take things to the next level. Let's add some ripple effects. I'm going to duplicate this outline symbol layer and then give it an offset of negative two. That snugs it in. And now we've nestled in a little waterline two points in from the coast. And I'll reduce its width from two to one because I want these ripply waterlines to recede visually as they go. Now this is an important step. I'm going to change its rendering option from fast to accurate. This ensures the lines don't get coiled up on each other in complex areas. And now that I have that nice little accurate inner ring, I'm gonna go back here and duplicate it. One, two, three more times. Now that's a total of four water ripples, but you can have as many as you want. Next, I'll progressively reduce their line width. So I'll select the second ripple and change its line width from one to 0 0.6. The third ripple line, I'll make a stroke width of 0 0.4. And this fourth line, I'll make 0 0.2. So we've made each water line progressively thinner. Now it's time to nudge them in sequentially. I'll nudge them in two points per line. And the result is so charming. Sure, rippling water lines are cool, but what if we turn it up to 11 with a dashed line effect? You know, if you need that extra push over the cliff. So for my innermost water line, I'll activate the dash effect. I'll just choose any old dash type and I'm gonna replace this dash template with a handful of random numbers, which, you know, I just dig. Okay, one last little bit of tomfoolery. I wanna add a faded green bank to this river. Make it look like it would fit into the adventures of Frog and Toad. I'll add another stroke to this list of symbol layers and drag it all the way to the bottom, which sounds easier than it is. You'll see what I mean. Just keep dragging and scrolling. Okay, there it is. Now, this bottom most stroke, I'm going to make a gradient stroke. Then I'll make it super thick, like 30 points. And I'll set the two colors of this gradient to sage green, a nice mossy color. And that outer sage green, I want to be fully transparent. So I'll open its color properties and zweep, make it fully transparent. And I'll make sure to set this one to accurate as well. And for my final trick, I'll add the watercolor paper texture from Living Atlas. And I'll drag it to the very topmost layer and then give it a multiply blend mode so its texture cooks into all the stuff underneath. And one of the cool things about this symbology and texture is that it renders at a relative scale. So if you zoom in or zoom out, it still looks good. And that, my map obsessed friends, is how you can quickly draw shockingly detailed polygons in ArcGIS Pro and style them up to look like cute little rivers.